The South Today Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists. Tonight on the South Today, Aratan locals are upset at a new building height plan, fighting back with something tall of their own. A Dunedin church lawn is now fit to stop a tank, with a new sculpture paying tribute to a war-ridden country. And innovation's the word in Christchurch, as thousands got a sneak peek at the city's latest inventions. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Simon Henderson. New Zealand's most beautiful small town may soon look a lot different as proposed plans for an urban development gets underway. The Queenstown Lakes District Council are looking to increase property height limits in Arrowtown, but it's causing major frustration among concerned locals. Showing the height of what could be, Arrowtown locals erected a giant pole last Saturday on Adamson Drive to show the height houses could be under the council proposed urban intensification. Following the government's national policy of urban development, the new height limits of medium density properties will increase to 11 metres plus a 1 metre pitch roof. And low density areas will increase to 8 metres, as shown by the black marker on the pole. Arrowtown Village Association member Mark Hosey says residents are either unaware or shocked that the proposal has got to the submission stage. Uh, we have quite a big database of our town residents through other activities that we've got and uh, the feeling we get and the feedback we get is that um, they're aghast at, at what is happening or what is proposed. Posey says locals are concerned about how urban intensification will change the look and feel of the old mining town that the area prides itself on. There are also worries about the lack of infrastructure such as electricity and water that Arrowtown already struggles with. Uh, you talk to most people, especially in the winter, they value the sun and, and you know it's all about getting the sun and uh, buildings of this nature will, will destroy the sunlight and the amenity value that people have. Hosey believes that after the next AVA meeting, the association will be putting in a submission opposing the changes. The group is also looking to put up a scaffold structure the same height as the pole, adding a semi-permanent display of the proposed building size. In Arrowtown, the South Today. Dunedin Hospital's intensive care unit has now almost doubled in size as its upgrade has finally been completed following a lengthy delay. Staff are starting to work inside the new ICU space, which has added a total of 22 new beds to the department. Yeah. The first stage of the upgrade was completed back in 2018, with the full unit expected to be finished the next year. However, the air handling system wasn't up to scratch and a complete overhaul was needed, with the aged hospital infrastructure causing delays. But now the new beds are in place, staff are delighted with the space, expressing that running the unit while the work was underway was a challenge and a half. Yeah, it's, it's such a great investment because we couldn't live in our old exist, our old ICU for another eight years, let's say. You know, it just would have been terrible and we couldn't have ever expanded where we were because we're using every bed we possibly had. So this at least gives us so much more flexibility. While the beds and equipment are all ready to go, the space can't be used to its fullest just yet. The ICU needs more nursing and hospital staff to manage the new number of beds. Wiley believes it will be at least 18 months before the unit will be in full swing. A Dunedin church may look like it's sporting the Otago colours, but it's actually showing their support for a war-ridden country on the other side of the world. A new blue and yellow sculpture has been installed in the Knox Church grounds, with the art piece dedicated to the ongoing war in Ukraine. The colours of the Ukrainian flag on an anti-tank barrier, a long way from the battleground. This haunting sculpture has been temporarily installed on Dunedin's Knox Church grounds as part of the new site in the city for public art. Sculptor Laurie Forbes created the piece, crafting a replica of a hedgehog anti-tank barrier used in the Ukraine war. The motivation behind the sculpture, which I see as a symbol of defence, and hopefully peace. Glory to Ukraine 
means pushing a tyrant regime back to its borders. The sculpture is titled Slava Ukraini, Glory to Ukraine, standing in solidarity with the Ukrainian soldiers following Russia's full-scale invasion of the country. Art is really important in this fight and um, it's a universal language uh, that is that everybody uh, can understand. And the blue and yellow anti-tank sculpture isn't just for viewing, with big plans to further support Ukrainians in need. The sculpture is available for purchase. The, I understand from um, the, the sculptor the price is $6,000 and the proceeds will go entirely to Red Cross to support the Ukrainian people during this time of war. The sculpture plinth at Knox Church was inspired by similar displays from all over the world with plans to feature new local art pieces every four months. In Dunedin, the South Today. Wanaka residents gathered near the town's waterfront over the weekend, celebrating the official reopening of a popular landmark. A public ceremony was held by the Queenstown Lakes District Council on Saturday, as the final tile was laid for the Te Aramomahara pathway. Attendees walked the length of the newly opened path as the replacement of the original Millennium Pathway was complete, which was installed by community members in 2001. The lakefront walkway features 645 etched historical tiles, each noting significant events that have taken place in the last millennium. Mayor Glenn Lewis was in attendance at the opening, giving a small speech to praise the unique project for its historic and cultural value. I'm sure residents and visitors to the area will be delighted to learn something new about this about the local and culturally significant moments for Wanaka and the Upper Clutha. Project developers are hoping the new pathway will continue to grow into the future, but there's currently no plans to expand the tiles beyond the existing 1,000 year timeline. In Wanaka, the South Today. Thousands of contemporaries got a peek at the city's latest inventions on offer at the Smart Christchurch Innovation Expo. A range of fresh and groundbreaking technologies were on display at the annual event, showcasing the region's greatest minds. Inspire and be inspired was the message echoing through the Tapai Convention Centre over the weekend. The annual Smart Christchurch Innovation Expo got underway on Sunday where up to 10,000 people came to view the city's newest inventions. The free two-day event showcased the latest cutting-edge ideas and technological breakthroughs, which are hoped to help shape a smarter future for the garden city. Very good innovators, uh, great minds, uh, many great minds here in, in, in Karshuch. Around 60 interactive exhibitions featured at the event, ranging from climate change initiatives to robotics, even hosting gaming and virtual reality workshops. We have a number of exhibitions that are happening here, so showcasing the latest in innovation. We also have workshops like the Minecraft and robotics happening, as well as uh, esports games taking place in the auditorium. The expo offered a rare close up view of the innovative Whisk Aero self flying air taxi which is an all-electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. De Leon says this year's event featured a lot more interactive exhibits for children and young adults, hoping to spark their imaginations. It doesn't only apply with kids, it's also with adults. Like When they walk around, this is their opportunity to be inspired uh, about the latest in innovation. She says the Expo is a vibrant platform for fostering collaboration amongst like-minded individuals with organizers hoping the large-scale event will help inspire the next generation of inventors. In Christchurch, the South Today. Fi Akine is still to come on the South Today, a superhero father running the Dunedin Marathon for a good cause, and rainbows are shining in Wanaka for the town's first Pride Street Party. Great Britain has a collection of varied landscapes and countryside to rival anywhere else in the world. And the best way to see it is to walk.
A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Here at Age Concern Otago, we offer a range of services to support Otago seniors to age well with dignity and independence. We provide social work support, visiting service, health promotion and social activities. Check out what we have on offer at ageconcernotago.com. Aero, used by Australia's top bowlers with their unique Z-Scoop grip that redefines the game. Machined with robotics for unparalleled accuracy, Aero, same line, every time. Earth is a planet of extremes, extreme places, and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. Welcome back. Thousands of keen athletes enjoyed the rare Dunner Stunner over the weekend, soaking in the warm weather by competing in the Dunedin Marathon. But one runner didn't just have winning on his mind, dressed to impress as he raised awareness of a rare disease. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a superhero on the run for a good cause. More than 2,500 enthusiastic runners put their endurance skills to the test on Sunday, taking part in the annual Dunedin Marathon. But it wasn't just getting to the finish line driving Isaac Walker. He decided to run the race to raise awareness for a cause close to his heart. I uh, donate plasma and have been for about four years since Josh, my son here, uh, got uh, diagnosed with a disease called Kawasaki disease. Walker's son Josh is now recovered from the rare disease thanks to a treatment infusing immunoglobulin from donated plasma. He says he'll always feel indebted to the donors who saved his son's life, dressing up as those superheroes, hoping to educate others on the importance of donating plasma. There's an uh, ongoing shortage for blood and plasma and as uh, time goes on I think both those uh, demands will grow as well. Walker completed the 42-kilometre race in 3 hours and 45 minutes, with a record number of participants crossing the finish line for the Emerson's Dunedin Marathon this year. In Dunedin, the South today. Wanaka rolled out the rainbow carpet over the weekend as the town got together to celebrate their diverse community. Hundreds of people turned out dressed in their most colourful clothing for the Pride Street Party, enjoying the glitz and glamour of the new event. Getting their hands dirty with colours of the rainbow. It was a colourful spring afternoon in Wanaka on Saturday as the town held its first Pride Street party. The history-making event was organised by Out and About Wanaka, celebrating the region's rich LGBTQI plus community. The Pride Street party had a range of activities, food and entertainment, with hundreds of people celebrating the rainbow at the Lake Wanaka Centre. Oh, they can look for drag queens, fantastic queens. Um, they can also look for some aroha and some love and some mindfulness. They can learn and educate themselves on, on the wider on the on the wider spheres of of the LGBTQI um, kind of kind of community. People from all walks of life enjoyed the festivities, with some holding the cause close to their hearts. It took 45 years for me to realise that I can actually do and be whatever I want to be, and 
this community is so important. Harker says the event had a great turnout, with funds raised from the party going towards supporting rainbow youth in the area. In Wanaka, the South today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. Arrowtown residents are protesting the town's urban intensification proposal by erecting a 12 metre pole. Dunedin's Knox Church welcomes a new public art site with an anti-tank sculpture showing support for Ukraine. And the Smart Christchurch Innovation Expo looked to spark the next generation of inventors by displaying the city's latest groundbreaking technology. Time now to look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT with Associate Editor Mike Callaghan. Welcome. Evening, Simon. Well, we've got exciting developments tomorrow about the New Dedan Hospital project and some of the cuts that uh, were announced to the project that may well possibly be reversed. You'll we'll have to read tomorrow's paper to find out what's going on there. Uh, we've also got an update on the mayoral code of conduct complaint against Jules Reddick. Uh, we have Polyfest opening tonight and carrying on all week. There'll be some spectacular action down there, I think, at the Edgar Centre. Um, we've got news of a Wanaka Early Childhood Education Centre closing and what ramifications that might have for the community. And of course we've got a wrap up of sport in our sports section looking back at the week of, weekend of rugby and what's coming up in this week. Plenty, plenty of reading in there. Thanks Absolutely. very much for that, Mike. Thank you. Time for a look at tomorrow's weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoreMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, a week of west to south westerly airflow lies ahead, bringing frequent showers to the southern coasts, along with bouts of strong winds. Heading to the top of the South Island, Whakatū has moderate south westerlies, fine and high of 18 degrees. Fresh south westerlies for Māwhera, mostly cloudy and 15 degrees. Ōtautahi has moderate westerlies, fine and 16. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, Hakatere and Tatihi Omaru are looking at moderate westerlies, fine and 16. Fresh south westerlies and brief showers for Te Oha Amaru, 14 degrees. Heading westwards to the Central Lakes, it's fine with gusty southwesterlies across the board, a high of 15 degrees for Wanaka in Tahuna, Manuherakia on 16. Heading south, strong southwesterlies and some showers for Iwikatia, Ma Ruawai and Ōwaka, all with a high of 13. Looking across to Invercargill, a few showers tonight for Waihopai, a low of 6 degrees. Cloudy tomorrow with showers at times and fresh to strong cold southwesterly winds. Showers clearing later in the day, a high of 11 degrees. Wednesday is looking fine at first, but more cloud and showers developing during the day with strong cool southwesterlies. Finally, heading to Otipoti, Fine tonight with northerly winds, a low of 6 degrees. Tomorrow is fine at first, but colder south westerlies, freshening during the morning with a period of showers clearing during the day, with some sunny periods increasing, strong winds easing, a high of 13 degrees. Wednesday is looking fine, mostly cloudy with fresh breezy westerly winds. And that's the news this Monday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. You can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. You can also follow us on Facebook. Just search for The South Today NZ to see stories from around the regions. The team will be back tomorrow. Mātua. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air. The South Today Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists.
UPVC Windows and Doors is a local Dunedin company who manufacture, install and service everything they make. Sign up this month for a free glass upgrade. Call UPVC Windows and Doors today. Living Well Disability Resource Centre, a not-for-profit charitable organisation and your one-stop shop for information and resources to help you retain independence. We offer a wide range of assistive products from jar openers to mobility scooters and provide assessments for Total Mobility, the half-price taxi scheme. Come and see the friendly team. You'll find us on the corner of George and Bath Streets, ground floor of Burns House. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need, from answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one. We can help. Call Gillian's today. Passion. Drama. Competition. Rivalry. Marketing. Numbers. Atmosphere. Power. Fight. Attack. Intuition. Love. Hate. Money, cash, millionaires, fans, 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 and fans. <laughs> oh boy. 